Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm at one of my favorite places to film reviews because we have some really nice palm trees. We got pine trees, seagulls, and everything else, but it's for very good reason because I got this Nori Green. Really fits in with the backdrop. This is a 2021 Nori Green Lexus UX 250H. But before we get into this small size fuel sipping luxury subcompact, let's talk about what's going on here, Lexus. This brand that's just built a reputation for reliability, for fit and finish, and obviously for a very, very interesting lineup. Now, this UX250H is the smallest. This is the smallest Lexus that they offer, and this really is their gateway into this premium brand, obviously the premium level, premium level of Toyota. Now, this 2021 UX250H, when you hear H, what do you think of? You think hybrid, you think fuel sipping savings, and you're definitely gonna get it with this vehicle. Now, looking at it, you might be scratching yourself. You're, well, maybe you're scratching yourself. I don't know where you're scratching yourself, but if you're scratching your head, you're probably saying to yourself, what kind of vehicle is this, Joe? Is it a crossover? Is it an SUV? Is it a crossover SUV? Is it a hatchback? Is it a sedan? What is it? Well, that's the great news is, is that this is a subcompact, but it kind of fits into a, a lot of different categories. So what I want to find out is, is this worth the price? of that entry into the premium brand of Lexus, and are you really getting a hybrid that's gonna maximize your fuel saving strategies and overall savings? Let's go ahead and find out with this Nori Green UX250H. Right off the bat, you know it's a Lexus. Very unique styling from this brand. I love the headlight design. This thing, for being a smaller vehicle, a subcompact vehicle, has a very aggressive look. You're gonna get those LED Daytime running lamps, love the way they integrated it nicely into the headlight housing. You have the optional triple LED headlight beams. Why are they call it triple? Because there's three of them. Duh, one, two, three, nice bright white light. We drop down, a little bit of this faux vent, but you know what? It's not too crazy. I am gonna zonk it though, because they could have made this a functional side air curtain. Just a little bit of gloss black, love the body line. This even has fog lamps. I mean, think about it. a lot of vehicles taking away fog lamps. We have LED fog lamps, and I like the way they extended the corner, a little bit of flat black, and just extended it nicely on each corner. Now, as we come across the front, you're gonna get that spindle, waterfall shape, open grill design. It's one of those love-hate relationships, but you know what? It makes the front end of this hybrid very, very aggressive. You got the metallic gunmetal gray finish on each of the elements. We have the blue around that Lexus badge, which means that this is a hybrid. One of the things I like is this nice brushed aluminum treatment that they have on this bottom portion. And then just a little bit of that flat black, nothing too crazy, but definitely has a nice wide appearance for such a small vehicle. Now, when we get up onto the hood, look at the fit and finish I was telling you about. Very nicely done. You're just gonna have a little bit of a rise and then it kind of use and disappears. So it's got a really nice, interesting overall flow of design to it. You come around the bend, what are we working with? Wheel and tire stuff. Now the first thing you're gonna notice is some very interesting flat black flared fenders on this thing. It would have been nice to actually see this all color matched, but it does give definitely a little bit of a color balance with the two differences from the body paint to the actual plastic. Now here's our wheel and tire setup. Now the good news is, being a hybrid, it still looks like a regular standard wheel, and I mean that in a very good way. So you're gonna have this gunmetal metallic gray, machine aluminum, it's an 18-inch wheel, 225 on the width of the tire, 50 series sidewall is gonna give you a nice, comfortable ride. But I really like the nice hard body line that they put in the, in the actual fender, and I'm telling you, this Nori Green is one of my favorite colors. It just kind of fits it to a T. Coming down the side, you're gonna get some gloss black on the mirror caps, a little bit of shiny chrome, on the mirror as well, but they do a very, very super slim LED turn single light. We have some bright, shiny metal work, top and bottom, nothing too crazy. I love the way they keep the roof rails nice and low, brushed aluminum look. Along the bottom portion, you can see that body line that starts on the driver door, goes into the passenger door. This is all showing motion. We have a hybrid badge. I'm confused by this. No, I'm not confused by what it means. I'm confused on the placement. Why do we need to have that there? 
put that on the tail end of the business instead of the side. It kind of just clutters things up. And do we really need to be bragging now about hybrids? They, they're very plentiful and there's even full EVs now. So kind of a little overdone there, but nice low roof line. You got a color match shark fin antenna. And I really like the way they have the quarter window actually in the door and not extending it into the rear pillar. Now, when we get to the rear of the vehicle, you have a very sporty low roof spoiler, a little bit of gloss black, nothing too crazy. The rear wiper, I'm okay with it. It's not too in your face, but it would have been nice to just make it disappear. But look at the styling. Everything, remember, aerodynamic efficiency. There was once upon a time that a hybrid vehicle had to look like a weird science experiment. This one looks definitely 21st century, and I really love what they've done with the taillight housing and the bodywork to give it that aerodynamic efficiency. LED lighting all the way across, looking really slim and trim. And then as we drop down, there's that blue Lexus badge. We got the UX250H. Remember, H means hybrid. That's why we don't need the hybrid badge. That tells you right there. And then really nice, just clean look, no exhaust or anything like that dangling down. Flat black on the bumper to match the flat black. You do have the tailpipe kind of just hanging down on the side, but nothing finished sticking out the back. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and see the power plant on this UX250H. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. I am gonna zonk the prop rod on a Lexus product. There should be no prop rods. It should be all hydraulic hood struts. Underneath that hood, actually a very tasteful engine cover. That's the nice surprise when you open up the hood. You have that bright metallic silver. It lets you know Lexus hybrid drive and it's got a nice Lexus badge there. What are we looking at? We're looking at a two liter inline four naturally aspirated engine. That's gonna produce 143 horsepower, 133 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to one electric motor. That's gonna bump power up to 181 horsepower. Zero to 60, not the fastest. Zero to 60, 8.6 seconds. The vehicle weighs 3,600 pounds, but the great news is you're gonna get some maximum MPGs. 41 the city, 38 on the highway. And if you're wondering, what would this compete with? It's really hard to say because it does fit a lot of different styles of vehicle, but the BMW X1, the Mercedes GLA would definitely be competitors to this Lexus, this small size Lexus. But you know what? Great fuel savings. Let's go ahead, get to the interior and see what the luxury trim, because this is a luxury trim, UX250H, what that brings to the table. All right, guys, we're in this 2021 UX250H from Lexus. I know you're at that point where you're like, Joe, you know, I've been looking for something a little bit different. I don't need a large vehicle. I definitely want something that's going to sip some fuel, but I also want something that's got that nice premium feel. I think this one might check off all the boxes for me. How much is it? MSRP, this one's pretty much fully loaded, the triple beam LED headlights. It's a luxury trim, which is the top trim. You're looking at $43,000. Let's go to the door panel and see what you're getting. To the door panel, you'll notice soft touch material. It's a little on the too simplistic side for me, at least on the top portion. I need some kind of contrast stitching or something to kind of break up that sea of dark material. They did a great job on the door handle. Lexus does some nice fine touches. You do have an off-white armrest, which, you know, if you keep it clean, it is soft, so that's good news. Um, it should be looking just fine if you keep it clean. Door pocket, though, is on the small side, so you're only going to be able to go with one Costco churro and a small bottle of milk, maybe some chocolate milk to wash it down. Going from the door panel to the dash, I do love this material. That here's See what I'm saying? Look, they brought a little bit of stitching, and it just makes it feel that much nicer. I'm loving the dash material, very different, very soft touch. Even this trim, this dark gray trim, it's got some actual like grain to it, which makes it look more than just like regular plastic. Plus there's no fingerprints. Getting to the infotainment, this is where probably you're gonna wanna zonk it. Let me know in the comment section. It's a non-touch screen. So you have 10.3 inches, which is good size. I don't mind how it's mounted. You got the Lexus clock there in the corner but it is not a touch screen. That means you're gonna have to use the touchpad, the trackpad, which we all know that that is not a very easy thing to do. Throwing it into reverse, backup camera's a little sad. It's grainy. I do have trajectory. I just wish that it would fill up a little bit more of that area. So we are gonna zonk that, put it back in the park. You got your AC vents looking good, a nice blue power button, because remember this is a hybrid, so 
technically you're, you're turning on the power. We got dual climate. I do like the toggle switches here. That's a very nice touch in the dual climate control. You have your CD player. So get your CDs out, get out some Pearl Jam, maybe some Run DMC, maybe some, uh, I don't know, DMX, and just jam out in your UX250H. The great news is ventilated seats and heated seats. So you are getting that nice touch wireless charging and open that up you do have a 12 volt just don't stick your finger in there it, it's going to zap you and it's not going to feel good so we'll put that back two cup holders here's your lexus key fob it's got the blue on it what does blue mean yes hybrid turn it around there's your buttons real nice looking good this is going to control that cbt not my favorite transmission but you know what that is the transmission of choice for maximizing MPGs. Here's your trackpad. Once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. I just don't recommend driving and using this at the same time. It's, it's very dangerous. You do have a full EV mode. I do like the way they have the controls here for tuning and for volume. They did a good job there. It's kind of like out of the way, but easy to get to at the same time. Semi-soft on the armrest. Open this up. You could put, I'd say eight king size snickers it's got two usbs and an aux jack in the seats i like the style the perforated little bit of gray just to break it up but i like this textured design you're going to get of course full power assist for the passenger and the driver and you have a standard size sunroof the crazy thing is this being a subcompact i'm six feet tall plenty of room up front I think it's gonna be a little bit different story in the back seat, but before we get there, come on over to the business end. I wanna show you behind the wheel of this UX250H. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel. You actually have a total of three memory seat settings that you could save for the driver's seat. You got your seat controls, easy to get to. Lower lumbar, I like the little bit of gloss black. It just kind of spruces thing up. And I like the aluminum sill panel with the Lexus name there. Steering wheel, I dig it. It's a good thickness, it's nice leather. The contrast stitching is very, very classy. You do have flat black on the button, so you don't have to worry about fingerprints. And if you're wondering, are there paddles? No, there's no simulated shifting or anything like that. Remember, this is a CVT, but what you do have is that digital display. Now, right now, it's in that normal setting showing you eco, the charge, the power. Watch this. I put it in the sport, bam. That's gonna adjust the parameters of the throttle. Uh, sensitivity and steering, but I love the way it changes the tack. If you want to go back, you go back. It's real simple. So that's really nice touch on that. And for 2021, they kind of reprogram the mapping for the throttle and steering and everything, which to try to increase that driving engagement. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to the back seat and see how your passengers are going to feel in this UX250H. All right, guys, back seat time. Now remember, the lithium ion battery is stored underneath here, sitting in the back. The seats are soft, thank God, because it's a little cramped back here. I'm six feet tall. No, I'm not making contact with the headliner, but it is a little tight back here. You do have the nice soft material all the way around the seat. No pocket for sitting behind the driver. You do have two rear AC vents and two USBs, which is a nice touch. It's good to have that connectivity and a little AC back here. I have a pretty good sized pocket. I could put my Simon Says. I could put my Abacus in there. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe even put like a travel size set of battleship. You sunk my battleship. No, I sunk yours. Sitting here though, it feels good. Armrest, soft as a marshmallow. And it sort of looks like a deformed marshmallow with two cup holders. Or you could just fill those up with mini marshmallows. Kind of weird, but you could do it. Let's get to the back cargo area and see what kind of room we have in this small Lexus. All right, guys, cargo area time, real simple. Gonna hit the button. Nice electric assist, comes on up. The bumper is a little high off the ground, just something to be aware of when you're getting things in and out. What's new for 2021, yes, there's something new, is this floor, this cargo floor. Right now, in the standard position, it's 17 cubic feet of space. What's kind of nice is, in the standard position, you do have some storage underneath. So you could fill that up with potato chips, get yourself some ranch, dip maybe some french onion dip and just go to town but watch this this is what the real magic is boom did you see that within the blink of an eye i just went from 17 cubic feet you drop the floor down that's going to give you 22 cubic feet of space hey every inch counts right right guys out there every inch counts 
and it's nice to have that extra space. And if you want it back, that's it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But if you're ready, I'm definitely ready. Let's take this UX250H for a little spin. All right, guys, we're in this 2021 Lexus UX250H. Remember, H means hybrid. And this really is that gateway vehicle into the Lexus brand. So that's what the whole purpose of this vehicle is about, having that hybrid capability, maximi maximizing your mileage, and being able to get that higher level of quality and luxury that you come to expect with the Lexus brand. Now, it's interesting because I kind of feel like this vehicle doesn't really know what it is fully. Like, is it a hatchback? Is it a uh, subcompact SUV, a crossover? It's kind of a little bit of everything. And I think in a way that's a good thing because it's gonna kind of open up the door for people that maybe are are indecisive exactly on what style and what type of vehicle they're looking for they just want something smaller that gives you really good mpgs visibility is actually quite surprising in here the a pillars are really far apart and what's nice is even out the back glass you would think it'd be really tight the way it's angled and the shape of it it's actually not too bad the infotainment system yes it is a bummer I know that you're probably putting in the comment section still how you wish it was a touchscreen, but to be honest with you, it's actually quite far away to really make it a touchscreen. So you're gonna have to use that trackpad system, which I know is not everyone's favorite, but I do like the dual climate control switches, easy to get to, easy to understand it. And I love the fact that in this luxury trim option, we are working with heated, and ventilated seats. But while we go ahead, let's go on throttle. Here we go. So zero to 60, not the quickest. We already talked about what that time is, 8.6 seconds. So there may be somebody on a bicycle that does pass you, but where this really comes out the winner is how it drives, especially on the highway. It doesn't feel like a super small subcompact, believe it or not. It actually feels quite spacious up front. Now it is a little tighter for the backseat passengers, but from my perspective and your perspective, which we're behind the business end, there's actually quite a bit of room. The instrumentation, when you go into sport mode like we are in now, the tack changes, you have your analog coolant and fuel gauge, and then you have that other digital display which you could scroll through. Everywhere you touch, the materials are really, really nice. And that's one little extra kind of incentive that if you want to step up the Lexus, this might be the right vehicle for you. Driving down the road, the interior is quiet, not a ton of wind noise. You're getting a little bit more road noise than you are wind noise. Side mirrors work great and you're going to get all the safety features. The blind, speed, uh, blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, emergency brake assist, you have a head up display. So you're definitely getting tons of technology that's intertwined with that great fuel saving capability of this vehicle. Where it falls a little short, like I already mentioned, is just the zero to 60. And I'm not saying that every car needs to be zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds. What I am saying, it's nice to have a vehicle that gets out of its own way. Especially when you're getting on an on-ramp or you're trying to pass somebody to get into the next lane, it just makes life a little bit easier and a little bit safer. But really nice just driving on the road. The seats are supportive, comfortable, they look good, and they're, like I said, ventilated. At this price point, we've been in vehicles that are twice as much as this vehicle that don't have ventilated seats. So that's a really, really nice touch. Nice steering feel, and it's real easy to get to that mode knob selector to go into the different modes. You could go into eco mode. If you're trying to hyper mile, you could push it in. That's gonna get you into normal mode or you could go right back to sport. But driving down the highway here, I think another downside is just that CVT transmission. I mean, it as you saw, when I got on throttle there to speed back up uh, on the highway, it just stayed pegged at 5,800 RPM and just made a bunch of noise. So really not the most engaging 
of transmissions, but you do find a lot of hybrids that have that for that extra fuel saving capability. And I also like the fact that you're getting full electric everything in here, the seats, the steering wheel, the whole nine yards. So hopefully this gave you an overall feel of what the UX250H is all about. We're gonna get back to where it all started, where it began. So I will see you in a split second. All right guys, been another great day here at our favorite filming location with all the nice greenery and the birds and the bees doing their thing. Hopefully not around me, but you know what? We definitely got to thank Zach and the rest of the crew over at Toyota and Lexus for allowing Radies Rides access to this press fleet vehicle. It just goes to show that if you've been wanting to get into that premium brand, you don't have to necessarily break the bank. And if you're wanting a very unique overall vehicle that kind of fits a lot of different categories, plus is going to give you some maximum MPGs, this might be the right one for you at the right price. But if you want to keep seeing vehicles like these on Radies Rides, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rise family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the first link, become a Radies Rise Patreon member. Click the second link, get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Got to give it up to wonderful videographer, the best one in all the land, Lori, holding that camera like a champ, getting all the angles just for you. Show her some love in the comment section, please. Thank you, Lori, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.